later. Okay, let's get started. Hello everybody, this is Jack from tofluency.com and welcome to this lesson which I am recording live and I'm going to talk about the intermediate barrier, how to overcome this, the five-step plan for English fluency and then you'll also see inside my program. So I'm going to actually just share this here and show you this nice picture of me, this very professional picture and this is the image for this lesson, the five-step plan for English fluency. Now many of you already have my book but if you don't have my book go to tofluency.com slash book and you can download that for free. So you can download that for free if you go to tofluency.com slash book. But I know many of you have it and um, what I'm going to do is expand on this. Okay, I'm going to try and expand on this five-step plan for today. But first, thank you for being here. Thank you for spending this time with me. If you are new to the channel, then please subscribe and also give this video a thumbs up. I know a lot of you are doing this. Um, just to say also, there is a live chat box if you are here live. Giuseppe said, still in the office, let's hope my boss does not notice. So Giuseppe is watching this at work. Very cool. Great to have you here and thank you for being here. So today we're going to discuss the intermediate barrier my five-step plan for English fluency, and then we'll go through my program. So let's think about, or let's discuss, what this intermediate barrier is. And after we do that, I've got a great idiom for you too. So the intermediate barrier is where you are stuck at an intermediate level, and you feel like you can't progress to an advanced level. And I know that many of you feel like this. You feel like you are intermediate English speakers and that you can't progress to that advanced level. So this is what the intermediate barrier is. There are a few reasons why this happens. We're going to discuss those. But first, here is a really good idiom. To run into a brick wall. So on your screen, you can see this wall. And this just means that if you think about it, if you're running and you hit a wall, you can't progress any further. You can't run any further. So taking this as an idiom to your English learning, this is what happens. There's a barrier, there's a wall that if you don't do the right things, then you're going to hit this wall and you won't progress. So a lot of people are saying that this is what you feel like. Um, Alina, we do feel like this. Ludmilla, that's exactly my situation. Now what I'm going to do is share three reasons for this. Firstly, it's because you're not using the right methods to learn. So how you spend your time learning English is really important. There are effective methods, those methods that are going to help you reach that advanced level. There are ineffective methods, methods that won't help you reach an advanced level. So if you aren't using the right methods, you're not going to progress. Number two is that if you are using the right methods, then maybe you're not spending enough time. You're not spending enough time learning or using English. This is a problem because everybody is busy. Everybody has other commitments. So it's a difficult thing to change, but we'll talk about how you can change that later. And number three is not being consistent enough. So if you are doing the right things, then if you're not consistent, if you're not doing this over three, six, 12 months, then you're not going to progress. And a lot of people aren't consistent because they lose motivation. Now, my five-step plan is really going to help you 
keep your motivation and stay consistent. We'll talk about that very soon. But first, we're going to discuss a change in mindset, a change in the way that you think about learning English. And what I want you to do, if there's one thing to learn from this presentation, it is this. It's to become an independent learner. Okay, to become an independent learner. Now I'm just going to show you my face again and say hello. So becoming an independent learner means taking responsibility for your progress. So it doesn't mean relying on a teacher or thinking a two to three week intensive course is going to help you. What you need to do is to become an independent learner, take control of your learning, take responsibility for your learning, and then learn exactly what you need to do in order to progress. So once you make this change, and I know a lot of you already are independent learners, but once you make this change, then you are open to the methods that are going to help you. But you need to make this change first, okay? You need to make this change first. Um, I'm just going to bring up the comments. So this is for those who are watching live. Cancer's here, I am doing very well. Khaled says, thanks for your co cooperation. It is my pleasure. Ludmilla says, my problem is not spending enough time using English. Yeah, very good. Very good. Um, Gemma, and now Jackie's going to explain what his program is about. That's coming later. Juan says, it's not possible to lose motivation with your help. Thank you very much. Um, so if you're here live, please leave a comment. I'm going to bring up this presentation again. So again, become an independent learner. Now, what we're going to do is to discuss the five-step plan for English fluency. So I'm going to go through each of these steps and these are going to help you overcome that intermediate barrier. Help you break down that wall so you're not running into the wall anymore. So that's really going to help you. This, this, these steps are going to help you when you become an independent learner to overcome that barrier and to reach fluency in the shortest amount of time possible. So step one is thinking about why you want to learn English, okay? Why you want to learn English. Now, this is important for two reasons. Firstly, it helps you create a plan that is specific to you. So, if you are if you want to learn English because it's for your job then you can create a plan that's going to help you in that specific situation if you want to learn English because you want to go traveling and make new friends then you can learn more conversational English that's specific to you and your situation now a lot of you will say I just want to be able to speak to people but again, it's good to realize the reason why you want to learn English. And it's going to help you with step two. But secondly, when you think deeply about the reasons why you want to learn English, then it will give you the motivation to continue. It will give you the motivation to stay consistent. Because we have good days, we have bad days. So when you're having a bad day or a bad week or a bad month, you can think about the reasons why or think about your why and help you get that burst of energy and the motivation to continue. So when you have a really strong reason for why you want to reach your the level you want to get to, then it gives you that motivation to continue, to continue doing things on a consistent basis. So that is step one. Now, I'm just gonna read a few comments again. Um, people are saying, um, 
So Halimo says, motivation, the first language in the world, the first language in tourism, business, economics, and diplomatic relations. So Frank says, I'm planning to go traveling around the world. Maestro says, I'm planning to move to the USA. I learn English just, just for my pleasure. I want to travel abroad. So these are all different reasons. And when you think about how your life will be different, if you manage it, if you reach your goal, then that's going to give you that motivation to do things on a daily basis. So that is step one. Are you ready for step two? It's this. It's creating a goal with a deadline. So reason number one, or step one, sorry, you say, I want to study English because I want to get into a university in the UK. Okay, so that's your reason why. So your goal is to pass the IELTS test so that you can get into that university. If you say, I want to travel next year, then your goal is to reach a great level of English within that time. So your goal is going to help you create your plan. It's going to help you create a fluency plan that will help you achieve this goal. Now, look at the picture on this slide. It has a deadline. There's a deadline here, okay? So this is important, to have a goal with a deadline, with a date that says, I am going to achieve this by 2017, by September this year, by 2018. So you can set a deadline for this goal. Now, what the deadline does is it, it gives you the boost you need to actually do the work, the boost you need to actually study English and learn English. Because a lot of people have this. So just read this on, on your screen now. This is the someday mentality. And I've under, underlined a phrase of verb here. Because we put off doing things. We put off doing things. We delay everything. If we don't have a deadline, then we'll say next week, next month. And you, you put things back. And as the saying says, someday never comes. So if you have this someday mentality that I want to learn English, I would like to learn English, then you're going to put off doing it. But if you say, I'm going to learn English by September. I'm going to learn English by this time next year. Then it will give you the focus you need to actually do it. Now, think about this also. Think about when you were at school or university, or if you're at school or university now. Think about when you were given a task or some homework or a project or a thesis. Now, the teacher always said, you need to do this by next Thursday. This project needs to be finished by March. What everyone does is they do it by that deadline, but sometimes they only do it in the last couple of days. But know that this deadline makes you actually do it. If your teacher said, you can do this homework whenever, hand in your thesis whenever, then you wouldn't do it. You'd put off doing it because you don't have that deadline that will give you the motivation to do it. Now, also know this, that if you have a deadline that is easy to do, then again, you're going to put off doing it. Because you know that you can wait until the last minute to, to finish this homework, to finish this thesis. But if you have a deadline that is going to push you, that is going to challenge you, then you'll work now to get that done. So when you're thinking about your goal 
and when you want to achieve this goal, then think about pushing yourself. Think about how can I make this challenging? Because that's gonna help you reach a higher level of English faster. Okay, so don't have this someday mentality. Step three. So once you have your goal and your reason why you want to achieve what you want to achieve, then we need to think of a plan. We need to think about what is going to help us get where we want to go. So this is the question. What do we need to do to get us there? What do we need to do to reach that level and achieve our goal with a deadline? So on your picture, you can see it says change. And the reason I put this on there is because most people will have to make changes to the way that you learn. Just like I talked about before, one of the methods is that, sorry, one of the reasons why learners don't overcome that intermediate barrier, I'll go back to it, is because they're not using the right methods to learn. Okay, that's number one on this slide. Not using the right methods to learn. So we might need to make some changes. We might need to make some changes to the way that we study English. Now, I want to just talk a little bit about one of the methods. And this is my favorite method. This is the way that you can internalize grammar and learn new words and phrases. And it is this, it's called the sentence method. You can learn more about this at tofluency.com slash sentence dash method, where I talk about this, where I talk about this method. But it's very simple. You need to learn sentences instead of single words and get smart repetition. Now, my program, the Tofluency program, in module three, you get a step-by-step -step tutorial to this method, okay? So it's all about learning sentences instead of single words and getting smart repetition. So this is one of the ways that you can change the way that you learn English. But going back to what we talked about before, when we talked about your goal, what you use and what you do depends on your goal. So someone talked about um, that their goal is to improve their speaking. They understand things, but they need to improve their speaking. So therefore, it's all about thinking which methods are going to help me improve my speaking and working on those. So this part three or step three is all about creating that plan or knowing exactly what you need to do to reach your goal. Now, step four is a big one. This is really important and people don't think about this enough. And it is this, how are you going to do this? How are you going to reach this goal using the right methods? Because sometimes we can do too much too soon and we feel overwhelmed. It's too much for us. Also, sometimes we don't do things that are sustainable. So things that you can do on a consistent basis. And we need to think about how we can fit these methods into our daily life. Because if you have to make drastic changes, if you have to make really big changes to your life, then it's not sustainable. So what we want to do in this case is to look at our schedule, look at our daily routine, and be smart about how we introduce more English into that routine. So again, this is such an important step because it has to be realistic, it has to be practical. If you have a really busy life, then it's not practical to say, I'm going to learn English four hours a day, okay? It's not practical. But there are ways that you can be smart about this, that you can start 
introduce some more English into your day without having to make big changes. So this is such an important step. Step five is to take action and stay consistent. So this is step five because you can have your plan, you can know what to do, you can think about how you're going to do this, but step five is actually doing it. Actually doing your plan, going through your plan and doing it on a daily basis and staying consistent. Now, going back to step one, your why, this will give you the motivation to stay consistent. Okay, that is a big thing to do. You know, having this reason for wanting to learn English will help you stay consistent. But you can also stay consistent by making it fun. Getting into the habit and the routine of using your English and doing and just being smart about it. You know, not trying to do too much too soon, but instead making it a routine, making it a habit. So those are the steps. I'm going to just summarize these steps again. Step one, thinking about why you want to learn English. Okay, this helps you in two ways. It helps you realize what area of English you need to focus on. And also it helps you stay motivated. It gives you that motivation to make the changes you need to make. Step two is having a goal with a deadline to say, I want to reach this level of English by this date. I want to pass this exam by this date. So it's having a, de a deadline. Step three is to research and to know what you need to do in order to reach that goal. So it's looking at the methods, the way you study and use English and finding the most effective methods possible. Step four is to say, how am I going to do this? How am I going to make changes so that I can actually follow this plan? And step five is to, to do it, to actually do it and to stay consistent, okay? To stay consistent. So what I'm going to do is bring up the comments again and uh, just, just go through some of these comments. Let's have a look. I feel feel better because I love what I like and that's English. So Sebastian, you know, you love English, therefore you want to spend more time doing it. Um, let's have a look. Step five is so important to stay consistent by being smart and making it a routine. Yeah, very cool, exactly. It is, you have to make it a routine. You have to make it easy for you to do. If you if every day you say, oh, I need to study English tonight and you get that energy and you have to like really force yourself to do it, then you won't be able to do it. On the other hand, if it's just a natural process and you're used to doing this, then it will be effortless. I always give the um, analogy of exercising and trying to stay healthy. If it's really hard and you don't enjoy it and you have to miss other things to exercise, then it's not sustainable. If it's part of your routine and it's enjoyable, then you're going to do it. Just think about different areas of your life with this. Fif oh, 50 thumbs up. Thank you very much, everybody, for the thumbs up. So click thumbs up if you haven't done so already. Tiago says, the reason why I want to achieve a high level of English because I'm an undergraduate student majoring in English. I wanted to be an ESL teacher for quite a while. Fantastic. Really good English too. Alina says, I love English as well. I listen to Radio LBC. Very cool. Very, very cool. So let's go back to this now. And uh, we're reaching the stage of the presentation where I'm going to introduce this. Now... If you follow me, you'll already know what this is, the to Fluency program. We have quite a lot of people here today who are inside the program. We've got Gemma, um, Abigail, Cancer. So 
yeah, we have a lot of people who are inside the program. If you are currently a member, then please tell me in the comment section. I'd love to hear from you. But this is my program, which shows you what you need to do in order to reach that high level. It goes through the five step plan in detail. So I like to think of it as a course with two parts. Firstly, it gives you the plan and the training you need to, to stay consistent, to feel motivated, to have a goal. And then it shows you step by step the methods and techniques that are the most effective. So it is an online training course. It's all online. You can access these materials online. You can take the course online. It's the fastest way to become fluent. So if you follow my program and implement the methods, then you'll make fast progress to fluency. Now, point three, have a look at this. I set up this program so that you won't have to make huge changes to your schedule. So again, it's practical. It's gonna help you stay consistent. It's gonna help you do this for the long term. Now there is lifetime access and there are three options available. So there's TFP Basic, TFP Premium and TFP Complete. Now you can learn about those if you go to, to fluency.com slash start. So I've put that in the chat box for those who are here live and you can also see this on your screen, the bottom right hand corner to fluency.com slash start. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you inside the program. And here it is. You can see it on your screen. Um, make sure everything's working OK. Please tell me if you can't see this, if it's not very good. Um, but hopefully you can see this quite clearly on your screen. So as I said, it's a video training course. This is what you get access to. So once you become a member, you have this membership for life, including all updates. You can see here, this is what it's like inside. So if you sign up, you get to this page and you click start the course and it takes you to section one. Now, something that's important to understand, we'll just have a look at one video here. There are two types of learning, which I talk about in this video. Now each lesson has the HD video. You can watch this on your computer. You can watch it on your mobile phone. You can watch it on your iPad. Okay, you can watch it on any device that you have. But each lesson comes with a transcript. So you can read this while listening. Or if you don't understand something, you can have a look at this too. Transcripts are very helpful for you. And then I also have a summary of each lesson. So this allows you to really understand what is being taught in each lesson. So we'll go back to module one. This is expectations. This is the setting the foundation of the course. Um, there's a lot here. And I talk about things like language acquisition, how we acquire language, what to do if you're too busy, um, how to get more confidence. You know, and how to feel confident about your English. There's a lot inside this section one. Um, and each section also has a summary too. Now, if I go to section two, this teaches you about immersion, okay? And how to get the input that you need. This is an important part of the course. And it's really going to help you learn English without having to change your schedule. Again, as I said before, it's very practical. Section three is a sentence method. This is the method I talked about before and it goes through step by step how to implement this method. Now, this is such a powerful method. Those inside the program, they love it because what it does, it allows you to internalize grammar and to learn new words and phrases by using this method 15 minutes a day. And you can use this on your phone. You can use this on any device. And I go through exactly how you can use this method in this module. Now, section four is all about speaking. 
and this allows you to improve your speaking. This is what a lot of you want to do. So we look at pronunciation, how to improve your pronunciation. And then I look at the LRRC method. And this is incredible. It's going to help you mimic native speakers and proficient speakers so that you can really improve your fluency, improve the way you speak. And also, it's going to help you learn a lot of English as well. Now, we also have lots of different lessons in this section. And we talk about writing as well, how to improve your writing. Talk about making mistakes, you know, two keys here, reduce your mistakes and learn from them. And then again, the summary. Now, section five is all about your journey, module five. This talks about how you can stay consistent, your plan, um, different things to, I mean, it's, it's so in depth, looking at rituals and routines, what to focus on a change of mentality, growth mindset, thinking about your fears and how to overcome them, obstacles and how to overcome them, how to get the right kind of support, and also the summary in section five. So this course goes through the five-step plan in depth, and it's going to give you the methods and techniques that you need in order to make fast progress to fluency. Now, there are different levels of this. So in this resources section, all of this is available to TFP complete members. And also this section is for premium members too. But we just have lots of resources and these are links to everything I talk about in the course. There are different tutorials. So I talk more about the sentence method, the LRRC method. We have a checklist. We have a worksheet my audio book and book. Um, and this is only for complete members. These are extra lessons that you can download and download sentences for the sentence method. Okay, so you can download the sentences for the sentence method. And I'm adding about one to two lessons a month. So every month there'll be one to two lessons. And again, if you sign up, you get this for life. Also, if you get the complete, there is a level test and feedback. So there is a, a test that I can give you to evaluate your English, to for me to give you specific advice on how you should improve, and also to give you feedback on the mistakes that you make. So you listen to these questions and then send me your answers, and then I send you back my feedback. And then for those who are premium or complete members, you can also listen and download my audiobook. So this is a 30 minute audiobook that talks about the five step plan. So let me get back to my screen. Back to this. Okay. I haven't been able to read the comments, so please forgive me. So people love this program. As you have seen in the chat box, there are a lot of people inside the program. They love it. Thank you for this kind feedback. This is the latest review or testimonial I've received from Fabiano. And um, I'm just going to read the middle part. You will learn how to make English part of your daily life and to put your learning on autopilot, making good use of all the opportunities to learn that usually go wasted. Jack is also very professional, helpful, and responsive. So you can check out more testimonials if you go to, to fluency.com slash TFP. Something else I offer, which is important, is a 30-day money-back guarantee. This means you can sign up to the course. If you don't like it, you can ask for a full refund. So this means that you can sign up with confidence to know that you're only going to keep the course if you like it. Now, as I said, there are three options. There's the basic, the premium, and the complete. So go to, to fluency.com slash start, and you'll be able to look at those options and choose the option that's best for you. Now, remember, you get lifetime access. 
you get to keep this course for life. You also get access to everything inside the basic or the premium or the complete. You get access to all those lessons straight away. So you can go quickly, you can go slowly, it's up to you. Also know that for basic and premium, you can upgrade later. So if you want to test the course for the lowest price, you can get basic. If you want more options, you can get premium. If you want everything, including those bonus lessons and the speaking evaluation, then get complete. So go to, to fluency.com slash start, choose the program that's best for you, and then sign up and you'll be able to do this, okay? You'll be able to get access to everything. So I'm just gonna put this into the chat box for those who are here live. Then I'm gonna go back into the chat and answer questions that you have. So to fluency.com slash start, you'll be able to do that as well. Um, so I'm gonna go back into the chat box, just bear with me one second and bring this up here. Um, let's have a look. Sebastian, thank you for sharing the five steps. Looks fantastic, I like it. You are very welcome, I'm glad you liked it. By the way, how to remember vocabulary. Yes, so section three, or module three of the course is all about how to learn new words and phrases. Now, most learners make the mistake of trying to learn single words and out of context. What we want to do is to learn sentences and to get that repetition. When you learn a new word as part of a sentence, you understand how to use that word correctly. You know, in terms of grammar, sentence structure, you understand what other words it is used with. But when you learn single words, what you end up doing is making mistakes not using them in the right context. And a lot of people translate word for word from their own language. So the sentence method allows you to internalize that vocabulary, but also the grammar too. Um, hey Jack, I translated your five-step plan book to Russian. Fantastic, um, please share that with me. I'd be very interested in seeing that. Uh, let's have a look. Can says don't miss it, TFP. Um, Ole says, will the TFP be available in future? So it's only available until Friday, this Friday, but it's going, yeah, it's going to be available again, but I don't know when exactly, and the prices might be different. NASA says, is there a private class with a nice girl? No private classes, but in section four, module four, I talk about how to find a good teacher for you and also different ways that you can practice your speaking. Martha says, sorry I came late, but I was at home. Um, no worries, it's good to have you here. Maman says, Do you, don't you think it's so important at least to listen to English for half an hour every day? Listen as much as you can. And that's a very smart way to, to learn English without having to make big changes, is listening more. Tiago says, from your experience, is it possible for a B1 or B2 learner, this is an intermediate learner, to reach a C1 level of English, this is a great level to reach, within six months by spending one to two hours in contact with the language every day? It's, it's possible, definitely, um, you know, within six months. I don't like to give times because it always depends on the person, on what they do, but as I talked about before, it's so important to do the right things, to use methods that actually work. So if you're being very efficient with the way you study, then you will make progress. If you use the sentence method and the LRC method, and a few other techniques that I talk about in the program, then it will uh, really make a big difference. Um, Mr. Hung says, what's CEF in English? Um, CEF. Is it the uh, Common European Framework for Languages? I think that's, yeah, CEFR. This just talks about A1, A2, B1, B2, C1, C2. A1, A2, beginner, B1, B2, intermediate, 
C1, C2, advanced. Um, Sebastian, did you hear about AngloLink with Minu as an English teacher? Yes, I've spoken to Minu a few times. Um, I haven't spoken to her for a while. Any questions? This is a good time for questions, okay? Really good time. Let's have a look. Uh, so Greth says, I'm listening to audiobooks in an app called Storytel. Each time when I'm out walking my dog, or if I'm driving a long trip, I listen to books read in English. Very cool. Now, Greth, you're a TFP member. Go to um, chapter, I think, module four, no, module three, and it talks about how to use books with the sentence method. So that's going to help you with that. Very good. So guys, go to, to fluency.com slash start. And you'll have instructions there on how to sign up for the program, okay? To fluency.com slash start. It's going to give you instructions and it's going to tell you exactly what you get for the different levels. But remember, you can upgrade later. So if you get the basic now, you can upgrade to premium or complete at a later date. But the only time to join is today or tomorrow. So time is running out. Time is running out. Okay. Well, everybody, I'm going to end this here. I'm just, <laughs> just going to bring up. Sorry, I'm going to bring up a couple of comments. Omar says grammar rules not necessary to learn English for beginner. You know, grammar rules and grammar explanations can help you. It can help you understand. But to be able to speak fluently and naturally, then you need to get the repetition through sentences. You need to get that practice and that's what the program teaches you. Uh, Giuseppe says, thanks Jack for the lesson. I'm still alive. My boss did not notice me. I'm very happy that your boss didn't notice you. One moment. I'm going to turn off this light. There we go. Um, my problem is I'm understanding everything when I'm listening, but I'm not speaking fluently. Yeah, the methods that I have in section three and section four will help you help you speak without hesitating if you follow these methods so they're going to help you turn that passive vocabulary into active vocabulary so we're, instead of just understanding phrases you'll be able to use them cancer says i try to listen as much as possible very good uh, martha i still can't understand movies and tv shows yeah, I'm going to make a video on this soon. TV shows and movies are difficult to understand. I watch certain movies and I don't understand what they're saying. Okay, because movies and TV shows are very artistic. The, the volume, the dialogue is sometimes really low. There's music and there's drama and they use slang and they use difficult English and like really strong accents at times too. So movies are hard to understand for everyone. Do you think listening becoming more and more important in English? Um, it's always been important, but the good news is that no matter where you are right now, you have access to unlimited audio that you can listen to. People 15 years ago, 10 years ago, didn't have this. But now, everyone who has a smartphone can listen to anything. It's incredible. Let's have a look. Um, M says, I need to improve English as soon as possible because I have a presentation in university in September. So I have to learn academic English. So this is your reason why. And you have a goal with a deadline. Now what you need to do is to create a plan that you can follow to reach that goal. Okay, and to stay consistent. That's exactly what you do in the five-step plan. Thank you so much, Jack, best teacher ever. Thank you, Cancer, again for being here and for those kind comments. Um, let's have a look. Huda says, is this video saved or not because I was late and I didn't watch from the beginning? Yeah, it's going to be saved. It's going to be on YouTube forever. Okay, so guys, remember to go to, to fluency.com slash start and, and you'll be able to sign up for the program 
and there are three options available and I'll just show down here so if I get this right it's right here okay to fluency.com slash start so guys thank you so much for being here please give this video the thumbs up leave a comment in the comment section if you're watching the replay and I'll see you guys next time I was trying to time that perfectly and I'll see you guys next time.